Okay, welcome to JRX TV, and I'm about to review Ready to Love Season 7, Episode 2. So, uh, for those who are new to the Ready to Love franchise, uh, we've just had the second episode aired of Season 7. Uh, it's got, it's located in Miami for the second time. Last season was Miami as well, so most people are calling this one Miami 2.0. Um, now, last week, we saw short guy Dre get sent home as opposed to Blake. We saw Z get saved, but we saw Nadine get sent home. So um, the fallout from that, starts us off with this episode okay so we have z uh, basically asking all of the guys you know who voted her off why why was she in the bottom um she's she's putting the pressure on the guys to kind of find out who said what and who you know unfortunately this tactic doesn't work on this show all right I know it must be, you know, a shot to the ego or whatever. If um, if you find yourself in the bottom, um, but the key thing you have to remember is how you see yourself is not necessarily how everybody else sees you. So, Z interacted with every guy on the show at that point to ask them why she was in the bottom and. It didn't even come across as she was trying to find out what the reason was so she can improve or she can change some things. It was pretty much like she wanted to know, you know, who did it and why was I down there. So that doesn't bode well. And we've seen it on previous seasons, so it's nothing new. But that tactic or uh, doesn't usually um, endear you to the guys. And... Um, Andre let her know that too, you know, because um, you, instead of focusing on, you know, you've had a second life, a lifeline, um, a second chance, you've had a scare to say, look, the guys weren't feeling you, but there was somebody else they were feeling, they, they weren't feeling more than you. Instead of taking it like that, she's obviously gone on the um, interrogation path. So I kind of thought to myself at that point, um, yeah, things ain't gonna look good for for Z, for Z in in in, uh, in the show going forward. But um, so we had that. Um, we also saw Andre with his funky hairstyles. Don't know what he was working with this week. I don't know if he has a stylist or if he chooses his own hairstyles or whatever. But it was like he had a three and one. It's like he had the, the you know, the curly perm that everyone ribbing him about um, at the front. He had a man bun at the top. And then he's got like a South of France going on at the back. Um, <laughs> crazy. But I guess he's trying to be unique and stand out from the rest of the guys. And he definitely is doing that. Um, so he was talking to Jeffrey. And, you know, he was giving her, like, lots of compliments about how, you know, she's, how nice she, she looks. And, um, you know, when he's with her, he senses this real strong connection between them and blah, blah, blah. I say blah, 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 because it was all waffle. Um, because, as we see, um, it looks like. Cynthia, who is one of the curveballs, I'll get onto the curveballs in a second, but Cynthia comes in and um, totally draws his attention away from Jeffrey. And Jeffrey gets up and leaves at that point. So um, even though she did a little confessional saying, Yeah, well, you know, if you really are looking for someone real, then you'll come and find me. Da -da -da. You know, that's what she was spitting. Um, but yeah, it turned out to be waffle because. My man's attention was diverted as soon as um, Cynthia came around. You know, he was mesmerized. All right, with that, let's touch on the curveballs then. So obviously we have uh, Cynthia, 
who is a mother of two and um, we also see her later on in the episode um, where the curveballs have to sit with six of the guys to the, both the curveballs that come in on the for the women um, have to sit with the six guys on the show and you know it wasn't necessarily a grilling it wasn't a grilling actually it was more like uh, you know they wanted to get to know the ladies and Cynthia lets it out that you know she she may be strong um she has to be because she's got two kids but she is willing to um you know let a man come into her life and show her you know how what a man's supposed to do and she will respect that and allow him to do his thing which is important i'll tell you why that's important because we have uh, Kaveo, who is one of the original cast members, and she's kind of the said the opposite, you know. Um, but I'll get into that in a second. All right, so the second curveball um, on the female side, on the woman's side, was uh, what was her name now? Oh, Janique. That was it, Janique. Now, Janique is she comes across very rugged, very. Um, very hard personality um and i say that because it was straight away like as soon as she started talking it was more like oh well i'm gonna be this and i'm gonna you know like a lot of the i want to say more direct blunt and not warm not friendly um you know it didn't give off that energy at all when she was talking uh uh, and I don't think that's going to bode well for her, to be honest. Unless she softens up later down, like she meets someone that can kind of melt her heart or, you know, take the mask off or whatever. But, nah, she's, um, she's a bit problematic, to be honest. Um, but it's still early days, so I don't want to write her off yet. All right. Okay, so we also have we also have the case where uh, after the ladies sat with the guys, it was the two guy curveballs that come in, and the two guys are Fabrice, who's a fashion designer, um, and we have Mark Anthony, who's a lab technician. Now, Fabrice is an older guy, uh, and I must say, Fabrice actually looks older than what he says he is. Um, but he says that he's well-traveled, he's worked in Europe in the fashion industry, and um, I don't want to be bad mind or bad mouth him, but from what I saw, seems pretty intent on pushing lust and sexy energy and all that stuff ahead of actually looking for a relationship like he seems quite sleazy you know like a sleazy director who will kind of you know if you i can get you this job with a, or get you this modeling contract if you do x y and z not point not saying he is like that but that's the energy that he gave off that's the impression he gave off like he's down to um have the sex if you get what i mean um so he spent all conversation that he had with any of the ladies pushing you know the lustful stuff um nothing wrong with that if you want to go out like that but that's not gonna that's not gonna um promote like that you're looking for love but there were some of the women intrigued by his accent his worldly travels um, I guess they may find him visu visually attractive as well. So, um, you know, they were listening to what he was saying. I think Mark Anthony is an interesting curveball because he looks like he's going to be eye candy for uh, the, the women on the show. Um, lab technician, uh, if anything, he seems very confident. Um but hasn't said anything crazy 
this episode at least. Um, but yeah, when I saw him walking, I was like, okay, so it's definitely an eye candy aspect. Um, so that may actually put him immediately ahead of some of the other guys that are there. All right. Um, and I say that because he probably had maybe three women at least um, very uh, interested in him, you know, commenting about how he looks and all the rest of it. So that was interesting. Um, so, yeah, those are the four curveballs. Cynthia, Janique, uh, Fabrice, and Mark Anthony. All right. So I touched on Corvair before. Let's just talk about Corvair quickly. Corvair um, seems to think that she deserves to be spoiled. You know, if you can't spoil her, if you can't afford her, then you're out of her league. Like, she ain't giving you the time of day. Okay, that's fine. There's not a problem with with having that attitude if you want to be single or you just want to be spoiled, taken out on dates, da 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 That's fine. In a long-term relationship, you putting that out there so early means that you're going to give off the vibes that, as you know, you're only after the guy's ability to entertain you or spend money on you. You're not giving the vibe that the longevity of a relationship, the ups and downs, you know, not saying that you're going to struggle because that can be an unforeseen circumstance. People get laid off, people get sacked, people get injured, people have life-changing um, problems and situations that occur. So if you're attaching your happiness or the value of the relationship to what the guy can provide you, then you are going to have a hard time finding someone to meet your expectations. Um, most guys who are successful really care about what they, they do with their money. All right. Because you realize that money doesn't grow on trees. Um, a lot of successful men work hard for their money, just like successful women do. But you very rarely see a man say, I want my woman to spoil me before I get with them. That really, that's very rare. So, Corvea's, um attitude towards this is probably going to lead to her getting sent home very soon. Because, unfortunately, just like many women don't like to be looked at or critiqued just for their sex appeal or their physical, there are lots that do. But when, you, when, when you're looking at a serious relationship, you don't want this guy to just be knocking the boots and then bouncing and then going out and finding other girls. You're trying to lock him down into a relationship if that's what you like him for, right? If that's what you want. Um, so, yeah, putting it out there that you're interested in the finances um, early, you deserve to be spoilt. Yeah, you may be on the path to spoiling yourself for, for a long time to come, you know. Um so that may be a problem for Corvea going forward. And she was mentioned quite a lot by the men in the men's lounge. Yeah, they are not feeling her like that. Um, so, yeah, Corvea, uh, you're going to be um, a problem if you stay there. And... Don't get it twisted. You're entitled to have the expectations that you want, but that may not be what the guys are looking for in you. Yeah. Um, okay, we find out. Let's move over to uh, the guys. Uh, Blake had a less controversial episode than last week, um, but he was chosen to eliminate Z. And um, Lyndon... Uh, who has had interactions with Corvea before, and she stated that she could never date no one that lives with a flatmate. And um, that's where we really got to hear about her relationship aspirations with regards to what the men can do for her, you know. Basically saying if Amanda's with a flatmate, he can't afford her. Or she's accustomed to living a lifestyle and that guy wouldn't be able to provide it. That's cool. 
but now Lyndon is with her. And I think Lyndon um, really gave her some game, really gave her some real sound advice. And um, he did it in a way which wasn't combative or argumentative. She received it very well. I don't know if she's going to change anything about her approach, but he said to her, um, instead of talking about what you want from a man and what he needs to do, she needs to change it to, she would like to meet a guy that would do those things, you know, because there's more, she hopes to find someone like that. Rather than it being, oh, no, you must do this. You must do X, Y, and Z. You must pay for me. You must spoil me. Da, 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 right? So that was sound advice from Lyndon, and she received it. Um, so whether she takes that advice going forward, uh, we'll have to see next week. It was uh, Blake sitting down with Z that had to break the news to her that she is um, connect. You know, she has the least um, connection. Um, with the men at the moment um and i think that has a lot to do with her interrogating the guys when she went around asking them specifically who did who voted me off why was i voted off you know and some of them mentioned that in the men's lounge like they weren't they didn't like that because it puts them in a in a spot where um if they have to it's kind of like a confidential vote it's, it's, it's in the men's lounge. So women aren't supposed to know who voted for who and, and why. Otherwise, they would have been included in the vote. So in order to preserve the integrity of the voting process, guys are not going to go and reveal their choices and who they like and who they're close to and all that stuff. They're not going to go out and out and do that so early. So, um, yeah, um, Z ended up going home. And she sung a little song at the end. She was quite graceful in how she accepted the, the um, not rejection, but how she received the, the information from Blake. Um, now, she let out a little song, you know, and it left me thinking, you know what, if we had seen this personality from her at the end, if, if she had had that personality, uh, at earlier points, maybe she wouldn't have been in the bottom. Because one of the criticisms that the men had of her is that, you know, since being in the bottom last week, she came into this episode a very changed person. She was very um, unsure of herself and very, um, you know, very not accusatory, but it was more on her mind about being placed in the bottom like a shot to her ego and she didn't handle it well so um then also nephew tommy had has told them that they could give someone a lifeline there's they have one lifeline to save one of the women from elimination and they can use that at any point during the season but it has to be a consensus by all the guys that this lady is worth saving using this lifeline for so unfortunately it wasn't z so we'll see who we reserve that for uh, and the men will probably be deliberating the week after next. It will be another men's lounge. Next week, it's the women's turn to eliminate a guy. Um, at this point, um, I'm not sure who it's going to be. I will have to look at the next episode and get like probably halfway through before I realise, you know, who might be going and who might not be. Um, but I will say... The problematic men at the moment, I think Fabrice, the new curveball, leading with sex all the time is going to be a problem. I think he I think he thinks he has some je ne sais quoi, like he has some elegance. He has the French accent or whatever. And both uh, both Fabrice and Mark Anthony are from Haiti. So they really kind of uh, spiced it up a little bit by adding some Caribbean flavor of, in some sorts. They're two very different people. Um, but I think Fabrice, Fabrice's sexual energy, like what he's leading with all the time, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if they're going to get tired of it or they're going to see it as quite creepy. I'm not sure because the day and age that we are in right now, I don't think you can go about um, leading with that for too long. So Fabrice would be someone who I think 
could potentially get eliminated next week. That's my candidate. I would also say Blake has a strong chance. The reason why I say Blake is because Blake has three kids with three different women, which isn't a problem in itself. But you're not supposed to be on this show. Why? Because you're asking to meet a girl who's going to want you to, you know, devote some time to her, to get to know her. Um, and unfortunately, free baby mothers, free kids, you, a lot of your time and attention is going to be rightly so diverted to those prior relationships that you've had. So you're not coming into this uh, show, this setting with, uh, you know, a level playing field to some compared to some of the contestants. There are a couple of women that do have kids and they will probably have uh, a similar, um, you know, a similar background to Blake, you know, but at the end of the day, um, if, if you meet someone that has kids, then you have that in common and that may work. But I think the struggle is when you have, you know, that situation going on, and then you're expecting to meet someone who may not have kids or um, is, you know, trying to start a relationship. The problem is you, those, those, thing, those previous people in your life are going to be there for the long haul. And this person is going to be expected to put up with the, um, you know, phone calls about hospital tour appointments. I don't, I don't know, potential child support, potential um, beef with new partners that they may have when they move on new kids that they may have uh yeah it's a lot so i think blake has also come across as um someone who's quite opinionated um so yeah i i think fabrice and blake would be the who i see going into the bottom two at the moment but anyway those are my thoughts um i hope you enjoyed the review if you haven't checked out the show yet and you're checking out my review first, sorry to spoil it for you, watch the show, come back, leave some feedback for me. If you do like the content uh, or, you know, like the video or like my analysis and breakdown, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and uh, hopefully see you next week. Deuces. Peace out, people.